Hello everyone, this is Big Tony, Big Tony's Garage Metalworks. In today's video, we are going to do a cold start. Okay, so this is the 47 right here. I haven't turned it on and maybe... Let me flip you around. All right, today's video, we're gonna be working on the Nova. I'm gonna continue working on it. What I plan to do today is go inside my garage and I'm gonna show you uh, I need to paint some areas like by where the where the door closes okay that area where the lip of the door closes with the body I'm gonna paint that you'll see what I'm talking about and then I'm going to possibly do some interior work on the Nova take out the carpet and I'm going to uh, put in some uh, some of that uh, soundproofing material okay so that's that's kind of what the plan is today so to soundproof and not only soundproof but it also protects the vehicle from noise and heat so it's like a heat shield uh, they have this uh, this material is relatively expensive that they use uh, it's kind of like a rubberized type material laminated with uh, like with metal uh, like aluminum or something I know it's like very thin but I'll show it to you and I went to a forum and they use uh, like roof type of uh, cover that's similar to it uh, and you know what if you don't you don't need a lot of money okay your time when you're working on on your projects little by little you don't have to do a frame up restoration you know sometimes it's fun to work on your own stuff you know you learn through trial and error and it makes you you know a little bit more uh, creative a little bit more resourceful it's always interesting and this truck right here you know I had it that often but I wanted to you know I want to turn it on and you can see that it's you know working these you know Japanese vehicles they're very reliable uh, engine wise trans transmission wise you know change the oil change the engine differential oil uh, do the all the you know liquids on it switch them off when you're supposed to and these things will run forever the brakes are super easy to do on these uh, and on most vehicles uh, suspension work is you know just very simple uh, mechanics on these trucks that were designed for you to work on them and be able to fix them relatively cheap uh, unfortunately some some things like the like the turn signal switch let me see if I get over here without falling down there's a turn signal switch right here that was not working and I did have to order this uh, all the way from China China so we, you do have this, this is mechanism that goes in here that goes around and you take off the steering wheel and take off the nut you will go in here and this is what powers the headlights turn signals and all that good stuff uh the wipers are not working i do not have the motors in there but i don't have the uh, wiper switch connected uh there's a problem with uh, with space you know putting the wiper blades in there uh did not fit with and then i you know welded uh the top you know on the top from the old truck to the new truck and it wasn't enough space for it as you can see look at all the ice here okay and this is like the sun hitting it and it's not melting it so that just gives you an idea how cold it is out here okay so this is the this truck has 161,000 miles it's a five speed and believe it or not it's running extremely well okay uh it does need fuel the temperature gauge works too and you can see i don't know if it's hard to tell with the glare of the sun but you can see right here that the vehicle is still wanting to work uh, the, the needle is trying to move up just a slight bit okay uh, just a slight bit so yeah this is the uh you know the the pickup truck i've driven it for two years over in the summertime you know it's really fun to drive it's extremely uh fun and and i enjoy you know putting my hands on this truck i put this truck together all by myself uh it, during the beginning of covid back when i first started about two years ago and I drove it last summer, uh, the summer before, and this summer, it's a gas saver. You know, it's got the stick shift right here. All right. As you can see, they have to clean the channel very well. This is the channel right here. All right, all the way across, all the way around to the bottom. And it comes up here. I already ordered these. I have to take these clips off. The plastic clips that you see. Uh, and then I have to scuff this down. I had like 600 grit. Hopefully that's enough to scuff it out. And then you can see like the leftover, uh, you know, this black, you know, 
uh, I have to take all this out because I have to glue it. So this is the the rubber piece that was here before. That's like the leftover that I couldn't get off. Uh, but when I got this car painted, they painted over it. Right here, it used to have the rubber piece, but it was right here was kind of deteriorated. But the bottom piece was still intact. And then the top right here was basically gone on both sides on the other door too. I used to get some water in here uh, in the floor area if I would leave it out, which it was relatively rare, like I said before, because I knew that I had that, uh, you know, that I had that water leak happening. Uh, and then I had also a leak right here on the, on the front windshield. Uh, so I need to put a little bit of silicon. You can't really see, but on the top end over there, I put some silicon and it leaks around this area right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some more in here. And here's the clips for the, you see these little like metal pieces? They are to hold on the strip that goes in here. And I, I'm missing what one part, I don't know if it's this side or the other side on the corners, I'm missing the piece of trim. I have the rest of it, but except for this piece right here either this side or the other that's why i haven't put that in uh and yeah that's what i'm going to be doing today i'm going to use the 600 right here that i have and i'm going to be scuffing it down and then i'll show you afterwards how it looks and then you know it's, it's supposed to warm up today but not <laughs> so when i see when i say warm up it's supposed to be like i like can like 30 degrees so it's like heat wave uh because it's been like today in the morning was like five degrees the day before it was like eight and gradually today the temperature is going up it's about 25 degrees right now start cracking on this and then i'll bring you back once i finish uh and then i'm going to see if i, I don't think i'm gonna be able to paint it i don't know if it's gonna stick with this weather uh it's not ideal for it and i think i'm gonna wait but we'll see we'll see how far i get i'm gonna scuff this down again all that black is the black and if you look inside you can see that's the original color of the car right there it was like a green like a light green or i don't know what kind of green you call it uh, but that's the black that came on top of it. Okay, so I let I let you go here real quick and I'll uh, Work on this. All right All right bros and girls I I taped this up Best as I could I already sand this part down right here And this part is uh, you know the door jam And I painted it uh, and it's super cold here. It's like 27 degrees supposed to be up to 31 I'm using this kind of spray. It's Good coverage stuff and I sanded it down, you know, went around and I taped everything, you know. Well, it took me a long time to tape this door because this tape was frozen. I put it in the microwave to warm it up so I could, was not wanting to stick because it was out here in the cold. So uh, yeah, a little trick, just put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds and then uh, you could untape it easily. But now I'm back here again and now it's cold again and now I have to hit it with my heater gun. So you could paint outside, a lot of people say you can't, but the trick to painting outside is to get yourself one of these guns okay you want these guns and uh, hit the paint first that uh, you gotta you know hit the paint I would say the steel you gotta warm it up right come around warm it up you know and then you have to hit it with some Windex clean it really clean go around the area and you gotta heat up the steel so that the steel could adhere to it and then once you spray it you do the same thing back and forth you heat it up and that's how I was able to get the spark on here. It's already dry right there, so it looks really nice. No one's hard to tell. It's nice and shiny with the paint. So you gotta do this on this side, on the other side, and then I'll continue, okay? I'll be back, people. Okay, as I can see, I finished up. Uh, <clears throat> spray painting the whole inside of this. All the trim all the way around to the bottom over here all the way in there okay all the way in there <clears throat> and I'm just uh, I was hitting it with the heat gun so this should be caramelized it's still obviously not 100% dry but I would say it's dry to the touch after waiting 20 minutes hitting it I hit the out the outside this whole car needs to be painted again so I'm thinking about painting it uh, uh, like a shine like a, like a I was going like gunmetal gray and then I was thinking just flat black again but I, I did the flat black already for I'm thinking about just painting it black with the high gloss like this trim right here that I painted. I had to scuff it down because of the inside and so I decided to scuff this up and just see how it looks with the you know with the, the color right. This uh, The car is a tad bit shiny as you can see from the front fender because I 
I, I polished it, but it's a flat black color. And the little fade that you see right here is because I sprayed it when it was really hot, so it doesn't allow it to really, you know, go all the way in, uh, you know, into the paint, so it gives it that dull look. But long story short is it kind of, you know, uh, smoothly transfers over there, and a lot of people like that look, but yeah, it looks a little bit uh, rattle canny, if you will. So I wanna go move away from that and, you know, make it look like I did before. You see that picture right there, and I remember that when I first got it painted, so I wanted to stay that way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is because I'm, I'm a, you know, saving money, I'm on a budget here. I'm gonna take all this tape and I'm gonna transfer it to the other side and that way I'm not wasting a product and then I could go ahead and uh, uh, finish the other side. And I'm, you know, it's a little bit tacky, so it's perfect enough for me to remove it and shift it over to that other side, okay? All right, watch me now. All right, boys and girls, so we have here the uh, door jams they're being sprayed. I just did the third coat. Uh, it's the following day. This is the passenger door now. It's a lot better picture than the other one. It was, uh, I pushed out the car out this way. And if you could see here, I did the jams. Get all the way down to, it's very shiny. I hit it with the, with the heater, with the heater gun. And uh, it's uh, pretty much dry right now. It's still a little, uh, might be a little tacky, but it is the third coat. And it's very nice so that trim it's gonna go uh, along the inside of the door like this and it comes up and about and it goes all the way around like I said before now the thing with this is uh, I thought it had some adhesive and I think you could put some up here in this area right here all along thin amount of uh, weather sealer that I'm gonna put on automotive stuff they paint the inside too I taped all this. I mean, it's dirty right now, but I just have to clean it still. But I mean, it's a big difference. I should have taken, should have taken before and after pictures. And I'm gonna wait for the seals to come in. The one for the trunk I put in last year. And uh, you know what I've heard is it takes a little bit of, ooh, a little bit of time for for the actual seal to uh, conform to the door. Is it just a fun driver? I do have the engine in there and the Muncie four speed that I plan to put in here. Uh, I have a concern, maybe anybody out there might know, but the brake booster there, I put off a different vehicle. In front of the brake booster, you could see the, the proportioning valve. Okay. And I mean, it breaks, you know, like it's supposed to. But the concern is that underneath that, there's a, a plate that's on the firewall that needs to come off so you could put the, the clutch rod that comes out and I have a good feeling that maybe possibly that booster might be in the way so that's another concern that I have I haven't been able to look down there that well so I could you know really check it out and be able to determine whether it's gonna need to uh, to be removed or not so anybody out there might know that I have motor mounts right there the ones that are you know all rusty looking are not the ones that are going in it's the ones that are on top I just laid them in there Make sure that I had the right ones, and it looks like I did. Uh, one of them looks a little different, though. That one looks different than the other two. Those, like the rusty one, compared to uh, the rusty one, compared they look the same, but that one looks different. Even those two look the same, and the third one, which is the one next to it up here, looks the same as these three. But that's the odd one in the middle. You know what I'm saying? That's the one that looks different. So I might have to even use that one. It does not look bad at all, to be honest. Even the the uh, rubber looks relatively good on it uh, but we'll see we'll see what happens next okay push this car in for today uh, go inside and have something to eat real quick I'm waiting to get this piece right here there's a there's a bumper filler piece that goes inside uh, that's part of my other video I think I'm gonna put this video out first but I took the front piece off of it because the bottom piece the bumper filler was cracked and there if this maybe the reason why it cracked is there's a metal support that goes in there goes underneath this car on top of the bumper between the bumper and the grill and it was missing the whole time so that might be part of the, the crack but i've also seen other videos that cars people have cars like this and they they all end up cracking so i don't know supposedly this is a better type of uh, material that i bought for the bumper filler 
and you know we're gonna hope to see if that's the case and I could be able to put this car together in a timely manner for the summer so I'm gonna get it finished this year uh, and then put it back out on the road again and this is a real fun car to drive like I said and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be more fun with that Muncie it'll probably be a lot more entertaining uh, and then eventually probably change out the rear end to a 10 bolt from a 10 to a 12 or a 9 inch or something with more you know posi with some deep teeth to it something that maybe some you know like uh, 231 gears on it or something I could take out to the highway that's going to give me a balance of both you know takeoff and also highway speeds you know and not kill me on the gas so the way it is right now I don't know what rear end it has the ratio but I know it's a 10 bolt uh, and I want to get something a little taller or how can I say something that I could drive on the highway better you know and I could be able to uh, enjoy you know more of a driver than anything okay so I've, I've been hitting this Nova for the last two days in small increments while I run and do errands I come back and I touch a little bit of this touch a little bit of that and I'm gonna tell you how far I got today okay so I'll show you real quick I did two major things, actually three major things, okay? The first major thing that I did is I painted, like I, I mentioned before, I meant I painted these, uh, the doors, right? They really dusty, and you'll notice why it's dusty. Underneath the car were some more clips, so I laid down on the floor, uh, and then I put some uh, cardboard, I laid on top of it, and I did one side, and I did the other. Pretty, pretty difficult hard to get out of they're they're stuck in it now you can see some remnants of this this is very fine dust very dangerous stuff probably has asbestos because you know back in the 70s and this came out of the car i tore out the carpet but it came from the roof right here see i took off the roof all the insulation stuff i pushed th this metal that you see right here like this cross thing i pulled it down and i scraped it up I'm not gonna put it back in shape again still because I'm going to uh, put some more chemical on. I'm gonna put chemical to take off the rest of the adhesive that's on there, but you can see what I scraped the crap out of it. That took me a long time. That took me about two days, just to, little by little, trying to take the corners off, but everything is finally off, okay? Uh, I had one of those uh, M90 masks, M90 masks on, so I was sure to uh, protect my lungs from it because it's crappy so the next thing I did like I said before I tore out the carpet that looks worse than what it is that's actually surface rust I had sprayed actually I didn't I painted with rust-oleum this floor about six years ago just to let you know and I didn't drive this car in the snow only in the rain but because these were missing right when it would rain when I would park it outside water would sit right there and sit over there that's why we have that that's how we have that surface rust. But this is solid, super solid car. Like I said before, this car is from uh, Arizona, New Mexico area. Okay, so uh, that I scraped it really, you know, I scraped it as much as I could. I took all the loose material that was on there, the rusty stuff, and I did it with that with that brush. You can see I also, you know, scraped there and I also scraped here. This has the least of it. So my next plan of attack is I am going to use uh that rust uh there's a spray that you could buy that's rust sealer so it'll kind of encapsulate that right and it turns into kind of like a grayish dark color and then once i'll let that dry then i'm gonna por 15 the whole inside of it okay and i plan to do the same thing up here with the brush up here very carefully so i don't get my you know back seat all messed up i might pull that back seat out i don't know i might just cover it i think that's what i'm gonna do uh, and then I'm going to do the ceiling and then that material right there uh, I'm debating whether I should use it like I said before or I'm going to go and just order some um, They're like 12 by 12 and squares and I'm gonna do the ceiling and I'm gonna do The floor video for today will end it there When you come back, I will more than likely have this in That's gonna be challenging. I heard you have to heat it up uh, at least that's what I'm going to do because it's about 30 degrees today. I'm going to heat it up and then get it to be a little bit more elastic. And then I'll come out here and I'll try to fit it in as much as possible to fit in the contours. I think you're supposed to start off at this corner first. And then, you know, put it in like this. This uh, is supposed to lock in here somehow and stay in here. 
So I'll put a little bit of adhesive right here, uh, you know, automotive stuff to, to keep it from falling out. And then the bottom piece, like I said before, is just gonna clip in, a little tiny clips. Uh, and that's basically it. And so we'll come back. I still have to paint all this in here, right? The outside, the outside right here. And the bottom piece right there, there's like a sill, that, like a metal piece that goes in there on both sides that I took out. But I'm gonna paint it all black. And then I'll seal the floor, like I said before. And then it, it, it'll, it'll be definitely weatherproof and that will not happen again. Remember, this is six years ago. I, I do not, I never drove this car in the snow. I did drive it in the rain. And because I didn't have the seal, it leaked inside, okay? And it collected on both sides. And that's what happens. But sure enough, I was lucky enough to be able to catch this on time, tear out the carpet. So I'm gonna order a carpet. Eventually, I'm gonna have to make a hole right there for the stick shift. Uh, and that's basically it, okay? So thank you for joining me. This is Big Tony from Big Tony's Garage. Have yourself an excellent, excellent day. Yeah, that's how dirty that thing is, look. That would have been all inside my lungs. Make sure you're safe and you use the proper materials to keep you safe, okay? That will give you, I don't know what will give you in your lungs, but it's not gonna, it won't be good, all right? So thank you for watching. This is Big Tony, Big Tony's Garage. See you next time.